Something, something, American anthem. Right, let's have a look at my United States gas mask collection, or respirator collection, or protective mask collection, which is, I think, the name you Americans like to give respirators, because why do we use the term everybody else uses? Because America. Um, obviously, you'll probably know that I'm a big actual fan of America on this channel, because I like the idea that people actually have rights, like the rights to free speech and rights to own firearms and not um, do what the government says or else. I know that in America, like most nations, you've actually got this kind of creeping fascism going on at the moment, where you are going to eventually start losing your rights unless you stand up for them. But that's getting off topic already. What I want to do is look at my American gas mask collection, or United States gas mask collection, respirator collection, what have you. Um, bear in mind, I don't have all that many American masks, although a lot of you have requested this video, simply because Unfortunately, how United States laws work, um, I think this is a law put in place in the Cold War, military surplus is not allowed to be sold to people outside of the United States in case we're like commie pinkos or something, and we sell the um, things or we make them into our own backwards engineered military stuff, despite even some of the stuff being really old. So I only can get this stuff when it turns up on UK eBay now and again. Um, once it's outside of America, you can buy and trade it freely but actual Americans can be arrested for sending it out of the United States because they're probably sending it to be backwards engineered or something. Anyway, um, we'll start off with a World War II mask I have, which is an army diaphragm gas mask. It's a weird kidney-shaped bag. Why did they design a gas mask such or like this? I have no clue. Um, but let's get the thing out. Quite an interesting mask. Um, basically, the idea with this is that it's a voice diaphragm mask, a very early one, so well done America, coming up with the content first. So here we go, here's the mask. It's made out of very similar rubber the M9 is, it looks a bit shriveled and crushed because it's been sitting in there. But as you can probably see, it's got a voice diaphragm in the inside, maybe you can't, it's too dark. But there's a voice diaphragm in there, you'll have to believe me on it. So you'd originally have this hose connect to a filter, some people said they cut them off when they sold them as surplus, other people have said they've been cut off because it contains asbestos in the filter and they can't sell asbestos filters anymore. Who knows? Um, regardless, you have got your sort of six point head harness, oh well that's actually ripped in that corner as well, but you would have had a six point head harness, very similar kind of mask set up to the M9. You have two tubes connecting to your intake there. Again, I don't know a massive amount about these particular masks, other than they were, you know, early attempts at doing voice diaphragm masks. Now, if you look at American World War II masks, they had absolutely loads and loads of designs. So, um, again, I'm not a massive expert on American World War II masks, so I won't pretend to be. But this was obviously a mask where they said, Let's put a voice diaphragm in that mask so people can hear us. Um, I know it upsets a lot of you Americans when I do my kind of rednecky um yellow bar voice, but I'm just gonna do it for the sake of this video if I wanna come up with what an American engineer says. Um and I, I mean it in a fun way, um just a bit banter, not an offensive way. So yep, yeah, that was the mask uh they came up with. There was lots of other World War Two masks. Um as I said I don't can't get them <laughs> because the law says I'm not allowed them, but um yeah, that's one of the World War II US masks with a voice diaphragm on. Can't give you loads of information on it. Uh, I'm sure you can find the information online out there. Looks pretty cool, especially if it was all working and new. But um, yeah, good good job on putting a voice diaphragm on a mask early on. I know you went away from the idea for a while, but yeah, it's quite a cool thing. Right, time for one of my favourite respirators ever, uh, ever even. Um, the M9A1, uh, when America had like one of the best design masks of the period and then they decided for some reason, oh, um, let's do away with a clever design like this. So the M9A1 is the big nose mask that all of you know about. It also comes with an asbestos filter nicely in this bag. So we're not going to use this M11 filter. M11 filter to fit the M9. The American M system really annoys me. It's also got some anti-dim paste in the bottom of this bag, but I'm not going to bother getting that out. You all know what that does. So, the M9 was basically, during the 1950s, they came up with an idea, or like 1949, whenever it was, that they kind of took all the good aspects from their World War II masks, other than the voice diaphragm for some reason, and put it into one mask. I suppose this would work sort of like a voice diaphragm when you talk, but anyway. The idea is that you have a 60mm mask, so it's portable, you know, you can change the filters. Comfortable rubber face piece, it's got Tissot tubes in it to defog it, it's got an oral nasal cup inside which you can't see because my hand's blocking. And it's all round very good. 
It's got kind of a modernised head harness, but it's not quite there yet. So let's put this thing on. Right now we'll do the straps up on this M9 Mars. Right now we'll do the back bit. It's got a weird back system where you um, button up the back for some reason. I don't know why. Somebody thought that was a good idea. But yeah, that's the M9. It's got no peripheral seal, which is a disadvantage about it compared to some of the M9 clones. But for a mask of its period, it's very comfortable. They worked very well. And you know what happens when something military equipment works really well? It has to be got rid of. It has to be replaced. You can't have something like the M9A1 in service for very long. You can't actually just improve upon this design. Now you have to get rid of it, uh, like every nation decides to do nowadays. Um, America is just way ahead of the curve. You go, well, this thing works pretty well. It's probably quite cheap for us to make. We need to improve upon that and make a mask that everybody hates. And now we have this thing, the M17. The M17 is a mask I have a very love-hate relationship with, as I'm sure you know. It was the cheek filter mask, the original cheek filter mask. The idea being basically that I've heard lots of stories about how the M17 originated, so I don't know if they're true or not. I've heard one that was actually a college professor who made it, and he didn't really um, know much about gas masks, but he didn't want many royalties, so they bought it off of him. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. The M17 is kind of brilliant on paper, but falls apart once you um, actually try and you know make use of it. It doesn't fall apart as in it falls apart. They were quite reliable in terms of being well-manufactured bits of rubber and whatever. This one being made by MSA, which is a good sign, because Mining Safety Appliance is one of the better US mask manufacturers. So, the idea was, rather than masks like the M9 with big canisters on the side, you'd have a mask that has the filters inside the cheek of the mask, which should in theory make the mask lighter and smaller, less bulky. Um, it wouldn't matter if you're left or right handed to shoot with, because it's got the same smaller filter on both sides. It sounds great on paper, doesn't it? The issue being that um, you can't change the filters easily. Like, they're really difficult to change. Even if you had the mask on like this, you'll like be bloodying your fingers and breaking your nails trying to actually get the filters out of the little pockets they sit in and then back into them. So, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of the uh, filters for these things, to say the least. What I will say is the M17 quality control-wise is better than a lot of the Eastern European copies of it. So, yes, the argument can be made that you shouldn't look at something like... Um, the Bulgarian version of an M17 and then say the M17 is bad because the Bulgarian version is bad. Um, the M17 is kind of better than them, but it still has all the same flaws. So, yeah, the mask itself is kind of comfortable, put it on. Right, so yeah, the M17 itself is fairly comfortable. It's not the most comfortable mask I have out of all my masks. Uh, yes, the weight is very evenly distributed, which makes it comfortable. But the cheek filters are just stupid. Uh, it did have voice diaphragm. The M17A1 and A2 also had a drinking tube system. Which is kind of ahead of the curve, especially when the A1 came out. But somebody in my Discord pointed out something very good to me, um, which is funny. Here's a mask where you can't change the filters without taking the mask off, right? So, you're only expected to wear this mask for like 6 hours or something uh, in a combat environment. Why would you choose a mask like that to put a drinking tube in? Surely the soldiers aren't going to really need to stay hydrated in a mask they're only expected to have on for a few hours at a time. I guess it was just kind of, let's put it in the mask because we've got it there kind of thing. And that's sort of good enough, I guess. But, you know, it is a bit weird. But, whatever. That's a um, quite a good thing to implement in masks. The M17 actually has a drinking tube system I like. The drinking tube, which you're probably not going to be able to see here, sits far away from the face. You twist the lever and it goes uh, backwards and forwards uh, in that kind of direction, which is a really good design. It's much better than having one that comes from the side and hits your cheek. So, the M17 is kind of a mask where it sounds, as I, guess, as I said, sounds really good on paper but it's just a really flawed mask because you really do need a mask you can change the filters on for a modern military mask, not something like this. Again, it's kind of trying to redesign the wheel. It didn't really manage it. It's very interesting for what it is, but it's kind of a bit of a flawed design. But while they were working at Cheek Filters, they did actually at least come up with a Cheek Filter mask that did do what it was meant to do on paper. Now we have the really cool Cheek Filter mask, which is like, you know, really cool and practical, but um, it was kind of too little too late. 
problem was the M17 is when they originally designed it, it was meant to be lighter and sort of less bulky than the M9. It ended up being heavier and more bulky than the M9. The XM28 is an incredibly light and compact respirator. It's made of silicon, so it's really comfortable. Um, the issue is, though, that silicon isn't that good against chemical weapons, so they only originally intended this as a riot control agent mask, and I guess they were going to develop maybe a version that works against blister agents and everything else, but they never got round to it. Um, but the M9, sorry, not the, not the M9, the XM28 E4 Grasshopper is a really interesting mask. Let's put him on. I'll have to undo the straps a bit more before putting it on. Um, but yeah, it's one of those masks that, if you don't know about the American naming system, XM means it's experimental or a prototype. M means it's um, like an actual military model. So, if something's called XM, it means it's a prototype. Um, and as the name implies, XM28 means that it never really went into full production. They did actually keep using it for military use of various things and riot police and things like that. But it was never actually um, made into a proper, you know, service mask. Now, one thing that's quite annoying with this mask, and I'm assuming it's meant to be like that, is that the oral nasal cup uh, blocks most of your vision. If that laid flatter, you know, like that, you'd actually be able to see really well at the mask, but it doesn't, it sticks up like that, and I'm assuming that's not where it's not pegged back properly. But, regardless, the XM28 E4, is a, the Grasshopper, is a really, really cool mask. It looks great, everybody thinks it looks cool. Um, you know, it's a shame that they didn't develop the M17 more like this originally, because then that would have been really cool, but they didn't. But the uh, Grasshopper is a very interesting mask anyway. One of the hardest American masks to find outside of the US, as in, you're going to have to pay a lot of money if this turns up on eBay somehow. Lots of people want these. I think I ended up paying about £100 for this one, so to give you an idea, you're going to have to pay quite a bit for one. So, you had the M17 and this mask, although this mask wasn't massively used, and up in the, even to the Gulf War, America was using the M17. Then what ha ended up happening is they looked at everybody else's masks and said, oh, maybe we need to have a mask like everybody else that has filters. So then America decided they were going to take the um, M40 approach, which is originally the XM40 and then became the M40. Uh, it's important to note that America was developing a lot of these masks actually sort of as prototypes, but they didn't really go anywhere as prototypes. So I don't really like the argument people made where they were going, well, America did have a really good 40mm mask. If it was only a prototype and they never put into production, it doesn't matter. It's like Britain had the EM2 rifle, which was amazing in the 50s, but then we went with the FAL. Uh, the EM2 project was abandoned, um, you know, and it never really saw the light of day. And, you know, we know from hindsight that if Britain had then mass developed the EM2 and fielded it, Britain would have had the best small arm in the world, maybe even till today, especially if they had kept improving EM2. It was a prototype that didn't go anywhere, so it doesn't count for shit as far as I'm concerned. So, um, yeah, sadly these masks um, like this didn't really see much widespread use. Some of the tunnel rats in Vietnam used them. But anyway, America later went to the 40mm masks for both the M40 and the MCU-2P. I don't have an M40, but I do have an MCU-2P, or the version with the microphone thing on, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so here's an MCU-2P. This one's missing straps. I've got a bit of paracord on it so I can sort of put it on. There's some weird stuff actually developing now on the panoramic lens or the visor. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't look good. Let's get this off and have a little look at it. Okay, so yeah, the silicon's now having weird stuff develop over it. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't look great. Can I rub it off? It kind of rubs off at least, but you know, it's not great that the silicon's kind of developing this. As you see, the silicon's gone horribly yellow. Now, this mask was designed so they could basically have a lightweight mask that gave you a very good field of view. You know, meant to be quite modernised. And it's cool, I think MSA Millennium is the current version of this mask, but there was kind of problems with it. One that, as I said, silicon discolours, and silicon is not good for a military mask in terms of acid eats away at it, blister agents eat away at it. Um, it doesn't offer that good protective capabilities. To kind of neutralise that effect, they had a polycarbonate face shield that um, would hook over the um, silicon face bit. So let's pop that on. There we go. That's back on. So. The mask's kind of cool, I'll give it that. You get a very good field of view. As I said, this is horribly discoloured because it, they didn't last very long. This is an MSA one, which means it's made better than the Scott version. 
but yeah my one um, I think there's a leak in the visor because people keep saying to me why don't you put straps on it well I could put some M17 straps or whatever on it but I still don't think it's going to work properly because it does seem with this that you know there's actually a leak somewhere in the visor because when I've tried to do a pressure test of it um, you know it's not worked I suppose if I could put M17 straps on it I could use it with my uh, homemade air pump and that way it would make a positive pressure seal but regardless the MCU 2P is kind of a cool concept mask. It was one of those sort of half-baked ideas again that could have been really good if they'd you know spent a bit more time thinking. Silicon ain't that good in a respirator if it's a you know attacked by them chemical agents. But um, regardless, it's a cool design. America does lots of really cool respirator designs that aren't always you know that well thought out, but at least they try. Um, it's better than what some nations do, especially better than what Britain's currently doing and bought a load of broken masks. But here you go, the MCU 2P is really cool looking, uh, sadly mine doesn't work as said, but they're cool. So as I said, thanks to all the Americans that watch my content, you are the uh, big lot of the people who watch my content, the vast majority. I do really like America as said because of the First and Second Amendment and all those sort of things, personal freedoms. Um, American masks are interesting, sadly I can't get as many as I'd like to because of the rules on the US with exporting and whatever else. but. American masks are at least unique, um, there's a lot of nations that just copy other nations and stuff like that, at least the American ones are unique, you know, even when some of them don't quite work right. America is now using the Avon M50, so it's a British mask that the Americans have bought. Um, from what I've heard, the M50 is really good, sadly I haven't got my hands on one so I can't tell you if I think it is actually good, but the idea is it's kind of like the cheek filter masks, but the cheek filters go on the outside and connect. Isn't that a great idea? It's kind of what they should have done originally. But um, Britain now has the cheap Scott GSR, which is like an M50 made on the cheap um, for people who don't deserve quality control in their stuff, and the M uh, and the GSR doesn't work properly, unlike the M50. So I kind of have the um, knockoff bad version of the uh, M50, the GSR. But from what I understand, the M50 is actually very good. So. Yep, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I said, I wish I had more US masks to show you, but I don't because I'm in the UK and it's verboten. Well, I wouldn't say verboten. In, it's for highly forbidden to send their mask out of America in case the communists backwards engineered them. Well, they already did all the M17 clones, but um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next video.